Aloha everyone, it's Kenan and welcome back to the channel. So if you were anything like me and trying to get into the world of engineering and design, throughout your schoolwork and people that you know, you might have some sort of idea in your head of what the industry is like. But is that reality? And that is what we're going to discuss today, the expectations and realities of what it's like working in the construction and engineering industry. In this video, me and structural engineer Matt Picardo talk about some expectations that we had going into the industries and if those thoughts actually ended up being the realities of our work. So if you stay to the end, maybe we can answer a lot of your questions that you have about each industry. And if you have further questions, feel free to comment below. But there should be no question about hitting that like button and subscribing and hitting the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. And with that said, let's get into the video. What did you think going into structure engineering was going to be and then how it, or is it different than what it ended up being when you first started? Uh, when I first started, I went to Cal Poly Pomona for my undergrad. So the good thing about that was that's, it's like a full, it's, it's a, school that focuses a lot on the practicality of things so i was fortunate enough to when we were designing steel or concrete we would usually have or it was required that we had a professor that had their pe so that means like they worked in the industry before so we did a lot of design work so a lot of uh what we do what i do now is you know how to use the codes how to interpret the codes how to design beams per code uh so that that set a good expectation on how the industry was going to be like. But even when I got into the industry, when I first got my first structural engineering internship, uh, the part that caught me by surprise was that's just, it's the design work that you do at school is so little compared to like what the whole industry is like, like the whole learning a new language with like RFIs, submittals, construction support, how that whole process comes in, mm -hmm. you see the bigger picture of what it takes to do a building and all the coordination and all the legalities of it. Uh, that blew my mind. I was not prepared for that. Mm -hmm. And like uh, one of the things was uh, <laughs> structural engineering wise that caught me by surprise or kind of did a 180 was like, wait, you're telling me the least important thing for structural engineers is like the calculations. Like no one cares about those. The only person that's going to look at it is like the plan checker. Of course they're important, but when you're talking about uh, what the contractors, architects, owners are looking at, they're looking at the plans. Like if your plans right. suck, your product yeah. sucks. Like that's our yeah. product. It's yeah. the drawings. It's not the calculations per se. Uh, but uh, knowing how important drawings are and the emphasis on those and the legalities of the drawings, <laughs> like they're like a binding <laughs> contract. So yeah. it's like those, yeah. that's what completely caught me kind of off guard when I first entered. And that's when I realized I learned, I knew absolutely like nothing. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. great, mm -hmm. you can design a beam, but what about all this other stuff? And then right. that whole other world and the coordination and, yeah, the people skills that you need to to get to get a project done that was uh, completely new to me and required a whole new skill set that uh, I could improve upon. And yeah, realizing I knew nothing <laughs> for sure. That's that's what it was. But I'm glad that the design aspect was still there because that's what I, I like doing. Oh, good. Yeah, good. what was it for like construction? Well, I guess. I guess the, the thing would be kind of going into my internship because once I did my internship, it was relatively the same, um, even across the two companies. So I, I would say that I was, I, I guess I, I was shocked at, well, I don't even know if shock's the right word, but I think that it, how easy it was to keep working. <laughs> Uh, how easy it was because of how busy you are and how much goes into everything. Uh, there's, that was, that was quite interesting to me when you, when you just hear it without being in the industry, like, Oh, you might work 12 hour days, you know, seven days a week. You think 84 hours, that doesn't sound normal, which is not right for most industries, but then you do it. And then you're like, it kind of did take that, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it, 
Yeah, got and and um, I I think I was also. You realize too that everyone is not everybody has all the answers, and there's a lot that goes into construction for sure. A lot of planning, a lot of just a lot of thought, and there's a lot of smart people out there. Um, but yeah, it's there's some things where you some people just don't know, and you just have to make the right call. And that was was interesting to me. Uh, your your college experience, no matter how good it is, will pale in comparison to what you get out of working and actually doing the job. Uh, it, it, there's nothing a classroom can set you up for, really, in, in construction, because each company will be different, each project will be different, uh, each environment will be different. Um, but it's fun. And uh, I guess more recently now, I'm, I'm getting more involved in the legalities of uh, the business, which has been, it can be disheartening, for sure, uh, to see how much effort goes into a project and how a lawsuit can de derail <laughs> that. Um, yeah. But it's, it is a, a relatively litigious uh, industry as well. So you know, it's, it's all fun and games to, you know, it's all nice to build, you know, and see everything go up. But if you don't dot your I's and cross your T's properly, uh, it, it can be, it can be quite, quite a task after the job is done. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. There, that whole legality thing with the, uh, I was like, oh, that's, that's not good. Like you see for us, like if we see like a clause in the contract, it's like, right. Oh, that's a, we should really look at that. You realize how important like uh, the legal side of it is and what you say on paper or emails and anything else like that can all be tracked. So right. even when you're writing emails or the way you uh, do your, your drawings or plans, I was surprised at how much of that can like come back legally. So yeah, like you were saying, like dotting your I's, crossing your T's. Um, you know, hopefully it never comes down to that, but no one... I think everyone loses on the team if, uh, if right. that ever comes to be. Right. Right. I mean, ideally, like they say the best jobs are the ones where you never have to pull a contract out in, in mm -hmm. any sense, but there is also there for the, for a reason. So you really have to have to know what you're getting into, what deal you signed. And, um, yeah, you're almost, you're almost, a, you have to be a lawyer to a certain extent, depending on what position you're in. You have to know what, what language you want to put in there. You want to know what's important, what risk you can take, what risk you, pack, what risk you can't, which is not always seen uh, when you just look at the building itself. How many emails went back and forth to build this building? <laughs> yeah, that's why they, the lawyer talk. That's why you need a lawyer to uh, yeah, or like every the middle everything has like like a little disclaimer about, <laughs> yeah, dis a disclaimer, about yeah. who's passing the risk on to <laughs> it's, not, it's not ours, <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like if everybody took every little clause like unbelievably seriously too, no one would work for anyone. So it's you have to build relationships. You have to you know have that working relationship with people. So that yeah, you can get covered later, but hopefully you never have to deal with it. Yeah. Well, I hope that video has answered a lot of the questions that you may have had about each industry. Again, if you have any further questions, feel free to comment them below. And if you enjoyed those truths about the reality of each industry, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next video.